When I bought the cheapest version of the Fisker Ocean with 231 miles of range, I thought I would get range anxiety, especially after 200 miles was my result in real world range after a cold day. I've now driven it on the highway in warm weather and gotten almost four miles per kilowatt hour, which translates to like, I actually broke this down right after I did it. So how much does the weather affect the Fisker Ocean's performance? The answer is a lot. I just drove 40 miles to a track meet for my son. Long story short, I ended up using about 10 kilowatt hours to get here. And 10 kilowatt hours over the 40 miles that I traveled gives me about the same efficiency as the Tesla Model Y. Now, why did I only get 200 miles out of my ocean on my last test? And for this one, it would be more like 260 some because of temperature. Right now, it is 70 degrees outside. And that makes all the difference in the world because the battery doesn't need any effort in order to get warm. And it also doesn't need a lot of effort to keep the inside of the vehicle at a comfortable ambient temperature because, well, it already is. But even in cold weather, I haven't gotten range anxiety. What I've actually been getting is company anxiety. And before I say anything else, Fisker employees, you're doing a great job. My responses from service, and sales, and even the title registration department have been faster than advertised each time. My issues have always been resolved, and I know that yours might not have been, but Fisker is improving as far as service, but Fisker, the company, not been killing it. And the signs are numerous, like this Fisker Ocean 1, still for sale right now for $50,000. This was a $68,999 vehicle MSRP and comes with tons of promised benefits in the future on top of that. Mismanagement. The direct sales method wasn't properly connected to the delivery network. There were no logistics in place. There was no service in place. We didn't know how the vehicle was going to be serviced, but there was this ominous promise of a large partnership with existing infrastructure that just never occurred. The accounting was wrong. We all know the accounting was wrong. And because of that, we have a late 10K, 4,700 vehicles that have been produced and not delivered. The interest payments are late. And a dwindling stock price that, frankly, is going to be tough to recover from. Secrets. Fisker kept too many secrets. I know because this channel wouldn't exist if Fisker just told the truth to people. I had to research a whole lot more than I should have to find information throughout 2022 and 2023. Customers were misinformed by omission. We didn't know about boost mode. We didn't know how much of the ocean was actually finished when it was released. And obviously the biggest problem with the Fisker Ocean is software. We've had problems with the screen and problems with the roof and problems with the windows, the key fob, the brake hold, the key fob, and also the key fob. 3.6 seconds to 60 may be true for the Fisker Ocean 1 and Extreme, but I guess you have to start the watch based on the car, not flag the car and start the watch. Because there's a tremendous lag in takeoff, just watch the most recent car wow video. There's a massive delay on this off the line. The current mystery is, are these dealerships actually going to happen for real? There are a lot of rumors out there that they're not. And some of the biggest signatories are already out. Is that true? Let me know down in the comments because it's still a secret. And since we're speculating, let's invent a word. How about OPUD? Overpromise, under deliver. And just because of the way it sounds, I Definitely hope that doesn't catch on, both in strategy and practical application. Oh, and let's not forget underfunding. Fisker really never had the money to do this. They didn't have the money to do the IPO properly. They had to do a SPAC merge. They didn't have the money to deliver the service infrastructure or the delivery strategy or anything else after the manufacturing of the vehicle. And at the end of the day, that's still their problem. They don't have enough money to make it. And that brings us to today, which is... Judgment Day. And I say that because Nissan has announced a business plan for today. If the business plan involves a partnership with Fisker to build trucks, then Fisker could survive potentially until the end of 2024. And yes, that's all the partnership with Nissan ever was. A partnership to use Fisker's architecture to build Nissan trucks and Fisker trucks in the same place in the US. How do I know? Historical facts. Diamond Star Motors, the Subaru Tribeca, the Toyota Supra, that's how this stuff works. Platform sharing. They don't sell the Toyota 86 beside the BRZ, but they're definitely the same car. They don't sell the Solterra beside the BZ4X, but they're definitely the same car. So if you thought Nissan and Fisker were going to go into business together, that's not going to happen, period. And a Fisker partnership is not guaranteed for today either. The rumor is that SK On will help Nissan build EVs, and that could be the entire announcement. 
But there's also this Fisker, Tennessee LLC that's been rumored to be something that could have something to do with Nissan. But once again, there's no proof. If Nissan doesn't announce a partnership with Fisker today, that's going to mark the end of Fisker in this current iteration. They might have enough money to survive a little bit, but at the end of the day, the confidence is gone. And now you're ready for the Nissan announcement. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Join Patreon or become a YouTube member for early access to videos and subscribe to see my report on the Nissan announcement after it happens. We'll see you on the next one. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you.